Station running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Good evening. Welcome. It is 10 after the hour. I'm Eric Erickson. This is Atlanta's Evening News. The phone number 404 872 wsb talk That is T-A-L-K. For all of you people who are coming into the state to try to drive people to the polls and you don't know where you're going. You also need to listen to us to figure out your directions. My goodness, the influx of -of out-of-state progressives. You can smell them in the air. This faint smell of weed and patchouli everywhere floating around Atlanta. I thought it was because we we got all the college kids in town, but nope, it's the out-of-state hipsters who have come into town to try to get people to the polls. Now, on that, the the Abrams remark from yesterday about farmers... uh, Broken by me at theresurgent.com. You can go there to find the video. It has begun making national news. The Asian American hotel operators have come out and condemned the remarks. Uh, this is Stacey Abrams yesterday saying that uh, people shouldn't have to work in agriculture or hospitality. She wants to create jobs in uh, renewable energy because global warming is real or climate change is real. Yes, she said that. Uh, The remark has not played well. You know, so part of the Kemp strategy is to build up his votes outside of Atlanta to neutralize her advantage that she may have in urban, highly populous urban areas like Fulton and DeKalb County. He couldn't have asked for a greater gift than Stacey Abrams insulting farmers and hospitality workers uh, and doing so in South Georgia. It, it Her campaign has realized she made a mistake and has tried to do damage control on it, but uh, the damage was done when you got the Asian American hotel operators coming out and, and taking issue with it. But th- there is something I want to focus on positively uh, with Stacey Abrams. And for those of you who listen, we did our poll yesterday. We had uh, over 5,000 people voted in our poll, our, our texting poll. Uh, and Brian Kemp won with like 96.8% of the vote. Um, Stacey Abrams got 2% or so, and, and the rest were undecided. Uh, less than 2% undecided. Um, I, I'm kind of surprised by that to some degree. But nonetheless, what is so fascinating to me in this is that there are a lot of left-wing political reporters in America who are convinced – Racism is real and everywhere you look. And they are so infatuated with Beto O'Rourke in Texas, who has no shot at winning, and they have completely ignored Stacey Abrams and Andrew Gillum in Florida. Andrew Gillum is the Democratic gubernatorial nominee in Florida, very progressive, um, very, very, very much to the left. He has a real shot at winning. He may very well be Florida's next governor. The, The polling there is tied. And... The media has completely ignored him in favor of Beto O'Rourke. There is an NBC News piece today that Beto O'Rourke has transcended politics. That, that's where the actual story is. He's, he's become a cultural phenomenon. Now, the NBC News reporter used to work for Think Progress, the, the left-wing political site. You, should, you do need to know that. Uh, he's, he's a left-wing activist who has NBC News has given the veneer of objectivity to, writing a piece that Beto O'Rourke has transcended politics and become a cultural phenomenon. They're not writing these things about Stacey Abrams. They're not writing these things about Andrew Gillum. They're not writing these things about black candidates. It, it's left-wing reporters who see racism everywhere who are only writing these things about white male candidates, uh, pondering openly, by the way, well, why, why don't Republicans have rock stars like, like Beto O'Rourke? Well, they would never give them that status. Uh, Marco Rubio, Paul Ryan, you name it, uh, would never be given the same status that a guy like Beto O'Rourke is given because they're not liberals. They're not leftists like Beto O'Rourke. He says all the things they want. He gives them thigh sweats based on his policy positions. Um, But Stacey Abrams and Andrew Gillum do as well, and they're completely ignored because they're not white. And that is a a real reality here that that even conservatives should be mindful of. Yes, there is racism in America. It still exists. And a lot of it exists among progressive reporters across America who want to throw their panties at Beto O'Rourke and completely ignore more viable challengers to Republicans who happen to be black in Georgia and Florida because, well, they're not Kennedy-esque in their appearance. And uh, you should be mindful of that. Now, the latest Internet outrage today is over Brian Kemp. So there is a, a series of videos on voter education. This is total Internet outrage. But, of course, the national media bit to claim that that Kemp is racist. 
Um, these videos, one of the videos shows ki- they're all kids acting as adults going through the voting process. And the kid who shows up without photo ID to vote happens to be a young black girl. So progressives on the Internet went nuts today uh, that this is racist, this is stereotyping, and on and on and on and on. And the Kemp can it's not the Kemp campaign, it's the Secretary of State's office. They took down the videos after the outrage. But here's the punchline. These videos were paid for by the federal government, and they were released in 2016. And all of the people screaming outrage now were around in 2016, but they said nothing. This, again, is another example of the weaponization of race on the campaign trail in Georgia trying to make black voters angry to go vote against Brian, not vote for Stacey Abrams, but vote against Brian Kemp. They're trying to tar and feather him as a racist as they tried to tar and feather Brett Kavanaugh as a sexual predator. And their evidence is a video paid for by the federal government, released in 2016. By the way, when Stacey Abrams was in the legislature and neither she nor any other member of the legislature nor anyone else had any objection to these videos when they were released in 2016, but now suddenly it is an Internet phenomenon and they're calling on Brian Kemp to resign as Secretary of State because of these videos. Yeah, the, the the Abrams campaign and progressive activist groups are calling on Kemp to resign because of the racism of this video paid for by the federal government and released in 2016. That's all they've got at this point. That, this, again, you know, none of this sounds like a winning campaign. Uh, they've released a real – I'm not even going to play the audio on the air here – really savage um, – attack on Brian Kemp today, uh, the Abrams campaign has. Uh, They're not even trying to make a case for Abrams at this point. What they're hoping is that black voters will vote for the black candidate without any thought as to who the candidates are or what their positions are. They are trying to scream in the national media that Brian Kemp is a racist who is sabotaging the vote and and silencing people and denying people the vote. They're not making an issues-based campaign. Meanwhile, you got Kemp out there. He's flying to southwest Georgia to make sure that uh, the election can be held. He's touring farm country, uh, talking about the disconnect with Atlanta and how Georgia needs to remember how agriculture is a big economic uh, generator for Georgia while his opponent is out insulting farmers, and he's trying to make the case that it, the rest of the state shouldn't have to subsidize Atlanta. We need to focus on um, the, how we can help people who live in rural parts of Georgia, uh, not at the expense of Atlanta, but in addition to the people in Atlanta. Uh, his, he's running a very issues-based campaign, and meanwhile, the other side has gone hysterical, uh, screaming about everything is racist, and everything is voter suppression, and everything is bad, and everything is awful, and that just it doesn't sound that sounds like a grievance campaign. It doesn't sound like a gubernatorial campaign. It, it sounds like we're trying to make people angry, not to make people go vote. And I don't know that it's a winning strategy. And the early voting numbers don't suggest that it is either. Republicans appear to be outpacing Democrats in early voting right now. And hmm, that's not a bad thing. Y'all, with all the recent news about online security breaches, it's hard not to worry about where our data goes. Making an online purchase or simply accessing your email could put your private information at risk. You're being tracked online by social media sites, marketing companies, your mobile provider, your internet provider. Not only can they record your browsing history, they can often sell it to other companies who want to profit from your information. And you know this is true. You, You go on Facebook and you look at something and next thing you know, all of a sudden you see these ads. Or as a friend of mine did, you order a cheese plate on an airliner with your credit card. And next thing you know, on Facebook, all your ads are for that cheese company. Privacy is at stake these days. And when I'm at home, I don't worry about it. But when I'm traveling more and more, I use ExpressVPN to ensure my privacy. ExpressVPN has easy to use apps that run seamlessly in the background on your computer, phone, and tablet. Turning on ExpressVPN only takes a click, and it secures and makes your internet browsing anonymous by encrypting your data and hiding your public IP address. Protecting yourself with ExpressVPN costs less than $7 a month. 
So protect your online activity today. Find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash E-R-I-C-K for three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash Eric to learn more. It is 26 after the hour. I'm Eric Erickson. The phone number here, 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. Now, oh, we, yeah, no, 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 I'm saving this. This is going to be my tease, folks. I have just been sent an advertisement. It's not even in Georgia. <laughs> I I don't even know how to begin to describe this radio advertisement uh, that is appearing on radio stations for a Republican member of Congress. <laughs> Y'all, you, you really you may run off the road when you hear this advertisement. It is a it is a radio ad that is being played on um, predominantly black stations in Virginia for a Republican member. <laughs> Congress and it goes full Kavanaugh. <laughs> it's, it's it's two black women having this conversation about. Uh, did you see what they did to that Supreme Court justice? One white woman can send your man to jail. <laughs> I've got the audio. When we come, at, you have got to hear this radio ad. Uh, it's paid for by some outside group. Um, it basically, um, black supporters of the president's agenda or something like that is the name of the pack. It, it this, this ad will blow your mind. When I come back, I will play you this advertisement. Uh, you may run off the road when you hear it. And some of you will think, why aren't they doing more of that? Uh, I'm kind of hoping they don't, but you can make up your mind when we come back and I'll take your phone calls as well before we move on with the rest of the show. Welcome back. It is 40 after the hour. Eric Erickson here. The phone number 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. I got to play you all this ad. It is not a Georgia ad. You can imagine it happening here. Uh, this is an ad for French Hill. He is a Republican congressman. Um, in It's in Arkansas. I said Virginia earlier. It's Arkansas. Y'all. <laughs> I'm just going to play the ad. The congressman's campaign uh, would like the ad to come down. They don't think it's helping him. Um, <laughs> Y'all, I'm just going to play the ad. Y'all be the judge. What do you think about what's happening in Washington? Our congressman, French Hill, and the Republicans know that it's dangerous to change the presumption of innocence to a presumption of guilt, especially for black men. If the Democrats can do that to a white justice of the Supreme Court with no evidence, no corroboration, and all of her witnesses, including her best friend, say it didn't happen, what will happen to our husbands, our fathers, or our sons when a white girl lies on them? Girl, white Democrats will be lynching black folk again. Honey, I've always told my son, don't be messing around with that. If you get caught, she will cry rape. I'm voting to keep Congressman French Hill and the Republicans because we have to protect our men and boys. We can't afford to let white Democrats take us back to bad old days of race verdicts, life sentences, and lynchings when a white girl screams rape. Paid for by black Americans for the president's agenda. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. ad is this ad is when you're you got a bunch of of republicans and they've been sitting around a campfire and they finished off a bottle of bourbon together <laughs> and they're thinking you know i wish someone would go on black radio stations and say democrats are going to take you back to lynchings <laughs> and someone sobers up and says that's a great idea or maybe never did so <laughs> oh my god <laughs> 
<laughs> and you know, there are a lot of people listening to this program right now. <laughs> yeah, you take the fight to them. <laughs> oh my gosh. I cannot believe the congressman's campaign would like the ad pulled. They don't believe it's helpful. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yep. Campaign season 2018. It's almost at an end. We've got 19 more days of this. Who knows what else will crop up? Oh, how about a Brian Kemp ad on a gay porn site? So um, in 2014, when Tom Cotton, the U.S. senator, was running, uh, a story circulated that he was advertising on a gay hookup site that contains lots of apparently explicit pr- uh, pictures. It's called Grinder. And it's like, um, oh, what's the, what's the, what's the other, you Tinder. Yes, it's like Tinder, but for, for gay men. And someone screenshotted it, sent it out to the media, and turns out it was Photoshopped. It, it wasn't actually real. Uh, and it happened about 20 days before the election in 2014. It became a big story. BuzzFeed, of all things, actually researched into it, and turns out that it came from an anonymous tip line. Into the media, and it was clearly photoshopped. Well, now someone has anonymously sent in a tip uh, that Brian Kemp's advertising is appearing on the same website, uh, whether or not it is true or not. Um, Now, by the way, you you know, you can, if you're hopping onto a website about Brian Kemp and then you go someplace else, as anyone who uses the media, uses the Internet knows, uh, the advertisements can appear there. Uh, so it may very well be a case that this was oh, one of those, oh, what do they call them, um, remnant ads. Remnant ads is what they're called. So when there's not an ad block for, and y'all, I'm sorry, my brain is still fried from listening to that radio commercial. But nonetheless, um, so when you go to a website and their ad inventory has been seen, uh, they pull in remnant ads from other places that fill the ad block. And that happens even on dating websites. I assume it happens on this website. And so that's a possibility. Uh, the Kemp campaign vigorously denies that it is actually advertising on that website. Uh, I do think it is notable, though, uh, that there have been multiple attempts over the past number of years, not just with Tom Cotton, to push these sorts of stories out that uh, <clears throat> ex Republican is advertising on gay porn website. And they all turn out to be photoshops. So I would tread very carefully with this story, um, particularly after the BuzzFeed exposure of the Tom Cotton story that is uh, identical to this one. Uh, Dirty tricksters. What is not a dirty trick is that advertisement. That was a real advertisement. I'm I'm getting messages from people asking if that was a parody or real. No, no, that's a very real advertisement uh, airing on radio stations in Arkansas for this congressman who does not find the advertisement helpful at all. I wouldn't think so. But I bet some of you really liked it. It is 54 after the hour. Eric Erickson here. Let's go to the phones, shall we? Uh, Tom in Decatur, you're up first tonight. Welcome. Eric. Yes, sir. My question My question is, um, with all the harassment that the angry blue mob is giving probably potential Republican voters uh, in public or anywhere, do you think gun sales might spike, which is contradictory to what the blue mob mantra is? Oh, I think if the Democrats take back the House of Representatives, uh, yeah, because they'll be pushing gun control. Frankly, I think if if Stacey Abrams becomes governor in Georgia, uh, given her desire for gun control here, you'll see a a spike in gun sales in Georgia just from fear that it'll be harder to buy a gun. Uh, Honestly, my my family and I, we we had to arm up because of of harassment, including having people literally show up on our front porch. Uh, And I I suspect as more and more of this happens and more and more of this violence, Violence happens from the Democrats. You're going to see people do that. If I had the money, I would be out buying more guns. I don't have the money to be buying guns right now. But if I did, I would. I tell you what, uh, go see some of my favorite gun stores in Georgia. I haven't been to the shot spot over in Carrollton in forever. Just hadn't had the money to do it. But gosh, I think if Democrats 
take back the House of Representatives, one of the things they're going to do as a wedge issue that they think will help them is push a gun control agenda. And you will see gun sales spike from that more so than you will see from the violence right now from leftists. If the Democrats take back Congress and the left wing violence escalates beyond what it is, yes, I think there as well you will see uh, more uh, gun sales. Uh, Democrats getting elected helps gun sales, uh, absolutely does. Uh, And, you know, I'm okay with that. I think everyone should probably learn how to use a gun and go buy one. Uh, Interestingly enough, the uh, liberals are apparently down on the Halloween movie with Jamie Lee Curtis because they're viewing it as as pro-gun. Um, yeah, she's, she's armed up and teaches all the other people in the movie, gives everybody guns and teaches them how to use them. Yeah. Now, when we come back, listen, I I have promised several listeners who are stuck in their cars, uh, on the interstate that I will replay that commercial. I will. We'll take your phone calls as well. 404-872-0750-1800 WSB talk. We've also got other data out there to talk about, including, How family structure affects crime in America. Some fascinating data you're going to want to hear. Welcome, it's Eric Erickson here, 9 after the hour, Atlanta's Evening News on WSB, the phone number 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. Before I actually get into any other topics, um, I I want to go on and take Joe's phone call from Lawrenceville because it's related to a bunch of the topics we've been talking about, and Joe's been waiting very patiently. Welcome to the program. I was trying to see if you have seen the Stacey Abrams mailer going out to women, particularly, <laughs> telling, telling us that we have the opportunity to make history for us, for women. Yeah. And it says we should vote for her because she has the chance to be the first female governor of Georgia and the first black female governor in the country. It gives no other qualifications, right. viewpoints, doesn't even tell her political affiliation. It's just about Nowhere making history. Say she's a Democrat. It just says that I should vote for her because she's a woman. Yeah, I, I know very I know very well what you're, get, you're talking about because my wife, I don't know my and, and you know this is I think the Democrats are burning through money here. My wife votes in Republican primaries. She votes Republican. I mean, she is listed, if you pull up her voter file, listed she's labeled as as a hard Republican. And yet she's getting all of these mail pieces attacking Brian Kemp as a sex predator and and all the other lies they're pushing. And, And this one as well, the vote for history, vote for a woman. There's nothing in my wife's voter profile that would indicate she would fall for a message like this. And yet she's getting this as well. It, Which would be the same as my voter profile. Yeah, well, would not show that I've ever voted Democrat. Right. I, I mean, it is such a – now, have you gotten all the others, the, the, the nonstop attacks on Brian Kemp? I have not gotten any attacks on Brian Kemp. This is the first one I've gotten. Wow. And I was just appalled that it doesn't have any political viewpoint. Doesn't even say she's a Democrat, but mm-hmm. simply that I should vote for her because she's a woman. Yeah, there you go. That, that is the campaign. My wife has actually gotten, and they've all come in her name, not to me. You would think they would cross reference voter files, say, hmm, maybe not to that house. We'll save a buck. Uh, but we've gotten every day, it seems like, at least three times a week for the last three weeks, we've gotten a uh, full eight and a half by 11 uh, mail on heavy cardstock, full color, anti Brian Kemp. Brian Kemp supports sex predators. Brian Kemp supported the massage guy. Brian Kemp's a crook. Brian Kemp is this. Brian Kemp is that. Rarely have we gotten any until we got the vote for Stacey Abrams because she's a woman. Uh, Yeah, that's not a compelling message in my house. Y'all, I I want you to know that I love y'all. My listeners, I love you all. And there are two reasons you can tell that I love you. Number one, chief among them, proof that I love you, I have not mentioned at all. All the LSU Georgia game. Number two, many of you have asked, I will now play this ad again just for you. What do you think about what's happening in Washington? Our congressman, French Hill, and the Republicans know that it's dangerous to change the presumption of innocence to a presumption of guilt, especially for black men. 
If the Democrats can do that to a white justice of the Supreme Court with no evidence, no corroboration, and all of her witnesses, including her best friend, say it didn't happen, what will happen to our husbands, our fathers, or our sons when a white girl lies on them? Girl, white Democrats will be lynching black folk again. Honey, I've always told my son, (laughs) don't be messing around with that. If you get caught, she will cry rape. I'm voting to keep Congressman French Hill and the Republicans because we have to protect our men and boys. We can't afford to let white Democrats take us back to bad old days of race verdicts, life sentences, and lynchings when a white girl screams rape. Paid for by Black Americans for the President's Agenda. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. That's how much I love y'all. I, I I played that again, and I didn't talk about the LSU Georgia game. Okay, um, for those of you who want to hear it again, I'm not gonna play it again. You can go. I put it on Twitter. You can go to twitter.com/slash ew erickson. You can hear it there. Uh, you're so, oh my goodness gracious. Um, now, you know. So this is actually it actually becomes a good good segue. Um, transition. One of the things that it says is is we gotta we gotta protect our men and boys. There is actually interesting data out that is not getting any attention in the media. And what is so remarkable here is that it's a long-term study of crime and families. Did you know that the overwhelming majority of men in prison are from broken homes? Did you have any idea? I I actually assumed it would be like 50-50. No, 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 no. It's more than two-thirds of the men in prison are from broken homes. In fact, if you are a single mom, the odds of your child winding up in jail go up, particularly your son. If you are a single black mother, the odds of your son going to jail are even higher. There is a lot of talk in campaign 2018 from Republicans and Democrats alike about crime and families and education, and no one anywhere from any party wants to talk about the fact that the more families stay together, the less likely kids go to jail. And what you hear on the campaign trail and elsewhere, or when you what you hear from feminists in particular, is the hysteria of, oh, you're you're devaluing single mothers, or oh, you want women to stay in abusive relationships. No one said that. No one said that at all. What we are saying is that the two parent and some of you don't want me to use this word, but it has to be said because this is what the data shows: two parent heterosexual nuclear household remains the most stable way to raise a child. Now, the good news to a degree is that out-of-wedlock childbirth in this country has declined, Uh, particularly since 2008 and the economic meltdown. It has declined. There there was a big headline uh, over the weekend that out-of-wedlock childbirths have increased in this country. Actually, they got the data wrong. I guess they were reading the chart upside down. It's actually gone down in this country, and in most Western countries it has gone down. Since the economic meltdown in twenty in two thousand eight, but this data it is a long term study, and it shows that if you want to keep men out of jail, they should be raised by a mother and a father. In fact, there's other health studies out there that have come out in the last few years that a two parent heterosexual nuclear household is actually the most stable environment to raise kids from a health perspective. Uh, with the exception of, and this one is is odd, but it's not a statistical anomaly. Kids who are raised by a single dad tend to be the healthiest kids. And do you know why that is? Researchers assumed it might be a statistical issue, but they delve further into it. And do you know why kids raised by single fathers tend to be the healthiest? Because dads aren't moms, and so they take their kid to the doctor at the slightest hint of there being something wrong. Because they don't have a mother's intuition, so their kids are over-doctored. Uh, single parents who are fathers tend to over-doctor their children. But I got to tell you, 
as a as a conservative, as a Christian, as an evangelical, as someone who spends more time in public speaking these days preaching than actually talking politics, uh, it is depressing, disappointing to me that no one out there wants to talk about this, and there is so much spin from the left in particular in this country that to talk about it is to devalue uh, single parents or to uh, assume that you want um, – seeing women left in abusive situations when that's not what the argument is at all. I mean, if anything, the argument is um, make sure you found the right person. And once you get married, make that vow before God and man and you keep it through through hard times and not through economic downturns. When you're no longer happy, when you fall out of love, uh, your kid, even in a in a marriage that is considered not a happy marriage. Is still more stable than a split household. And I know that is painful for some people to hear, but more and more data is showing this, and no one wants to talk about it because it just opens a bag of worms, and people think you're being mean and not nice, and people get their feelings hurt, and people feel judged. But you know what? Maybe our entire society needs to be judged on collapsed marriages and children out of wedlock because a whole lot of men are growing up and going to jail and the daughters aren't fair and better either by the way they may not be going to jail but they're not stable and yet the kids who are in the two-parent nuclear heterosexual households they're doing okay how much longer well we're already hearing liberals and progressives say that the two-parent heterosexual nuclear household props up the patriarchy and is bad turns out actually no it's what makes our society perpetuate stably Y'all, with all the recent news about online security breaches, it's hard not to worry about where our data goes. Making an online purchase or simply accessing your email could put your private information at risk. You're being tracked online by social media sites, marketing companies, your mobile provider, your internet provider. Not only can they record your browsing history, they can often sell it to other companies who want to profit from your information. And you know this is true. You, you go on Facebook and you look at something and next thing you know, all of a sudden you see these ads. Or as a friend of mine did, you order a cheese plate on an airliner with your credit card. And next thing you know, on Facebook, all your ads are for that cheese company. Privacy is at stake these days. And when I'm at home, I don't worry about it. But when I'm traveling more and more, I use ExpressVPN to ensure my privacy. ExpressVPN has easy to use apps that run seamlessly in the background on your computer, phone, and tablet. Turning on ExpressVPN only takes a click and it secures and makes sure internet browsing anonymous by encrypting your data and hiding your public IP address. Protecting yourself with ExpressVPN costs less than $7 a month. So protect your online activity today. Find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash E-R-I-C-K for three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash Eric to learn more. When we come back, we will take your phone calls. We've got several people on hold. 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. There has been an explosion at the White House of temper, not physical explosion. It nearly came to that. White House staffers were afraid that John Kelly and John Bolton were going to come to blows right outside the Oval Office where the president from behind the closed door could himself hear the yelling. I will bring you all the details I know of when we come back. Forty after the hour, I am Eric Erickson. Oh, the caller I wanted hung up during the commercial break. That's okay because I wanted to talk about this anyway. Uh, if you want to call in four zero four eight seven two zero seven five zero one eight hundred WSB Talk, I'm going to pretend he's there before I go to anybody else because I wanted to talk about this topic, and that is what do Republicans in Georgia do to keep the state from flipping? And I have actually thought a lot about this. And there is a lot of data out there. Um, Number one, and this will be somewhat controversial to some people, but it is 
Um, don't invest as much in luring black voters into the Republican Party in Georgia. That is not meant to be a bad thing, but the data shows more and more that it is very difficult to get black voters to flip to the Republican Party uh, in Georgia. This is not a nationwide thing. I'm talking about Georgia. Don't at me. It is actually far easier to convince Hispanic voters to go to the GOP without even paying attention to this one. Uh, the data suggests very strongly without the GOP even changing its position on immigration, it is easier to convince Hispanic voters than black voters to come to, Georgia, to, come to the Republican Party. Uh, why is that? Well, the longer Hispanic family stays in the United States, it identifies as white and identifies as Republican. Now, again, these are just data-based arguments. Uh, don't take offense at them. I, I'm just telling you that the, the question that was going to be asked by the callers, what, are, what does the GOP do? Uh, you got to convince Hispanic voters that the Republicans are with them. And you know culturally the Republicans are. But here's the other thing. Let's go back to black voters. I said you should see the phones. They all lit up whoosh when I said go go Hispanic, not – don't focus on black voters as much. The Republican Party in Georgia has spent years trying to convince black voters to move through the Republican way. Number one, they do it really badly. Uh, and, but, and number two, it is a lot easier. All the data and polling suggest to persuade Hispanic voters instead of black voters. But let's not give up on black voters. That's not what I'm saying. Focus more on Hispanic voters. But culturally, black voters are more and more in line with the Republican Party on cultural issues. And because black voters are more and more in line with Republican voters on cultural values-based issues, there is a way to persuade some. You're talking a numbers game. Uh, there is a way to persuade some to come our way. When you combine that with the education issue, remember the, the Democrats' candidate for governor is running a campaign where she wants to make history by being the first black female governor nationwide – and the first female governor in Georgia. But she wants to do so by destroying all of the advances made on the education front by Republicans since they took office in 2002 with Sonny Perdue. And that will set black families back in Georgia, and particularly in the Atlanta school system that is a failing school system. Uh, so many school systems in the state and rural areas of the state failing – uh, kids need a way out, and the Democrats don't want to give them that. You can connect with black moms at that level on education. You can connect culturally and economically easier with Hispanic voters in Georgia, and the GOP really needs to make a go of it and find issues that resonate, uh, if nothing else, by showing them that Republican policies are good for them, uh, keep them employed, keep them in jobs, and the GOP is not hostile to them. I don't know that Republicans in Georgia have spent – as much time as they should as a party working with their elected officials to try to find economic policies that can grow their coalition. And I know there have been efforts to do this in the past, but I just don't know how well they have done. And this is something I've thought a lot about. Uh, there's also the Asian business community in Georgia, which, again, the, the Republicans in Georgia population-wise are still, are still in the majority. And you're going to see this in down-ballot races on Georgia, where you will see that the Republican spread down-ballot is, is much wider in some cases than at the top that are highly contested with Democrats. But you're going to have to persuade uh, these voters that the GOP for them is good economically and that the party will keep them safe. So you need a, a party that is tough on crime and you need a party that is good for the free market economically. You need a party that is good on education issues, particularly school choice options for moms. Uh, Suburban-wise, one of the things that's hurting the Republican Party right now is suburban white women uh, don't particularly care for the president. But the other issue, interestingly enough, is that the higher in income and education a white voter gets, the more likely they are to consider themselves a secular progressive. And as more rich secular progressives move into the Democratic Party, you have an opening for the Republican Party with Hispanic and black voters who are culturally conservative. Hispanic voters in the United States are the most culturally conservative voters in the United States. With Hispanic voters, by the way, you're talking very small numbers when it comes to the vote. Um, it's not a huge percentage of voters who are Hispanic in Georgia. 
But it is enough, particularly with the trend lines of growth in the Hispanic community in Georgia, it is enough to secure longer term the Republican coalition in Georgia. You're still going to need to over time persuade black voters that the GOP is not a bad party for them. And I think the greatest gift that the Republican Party has to be able to do that with black voters right now is the National Democratic Party. Uh, the the growth of white secular progressives in the Democratic Party hostile to conservative values helps Republicans tremendously with these voters. And I can show you uh, just data-wise how this is playing out uh, with Hispanic voters. In South Texas, Will Hurd and several of these other Republicans who should be toast because they're in majority Hispanic districts, they're in districts that went for Hillary Clinton, they're winning. The Republicans are winning, and they're winning with Hispanic voters because they've shown Hispanic voters that even with Donald Trump in the White House, uh, the Republican economic policies, crime policies, and cultural policies are good for them. And they're turning Republican. We don't have as many Hispanic voters in Georgia right now, but then we don't need a whole lot to hold the Republican Party in the majority in Georgia. You're talking a numbers game here. Small amounts of voters coming into the Republican Party in Georgia actually help the Republican Party long term in Georgia. And I just don't know that the GOP really has that plan to persuade those voters to come on board. They need to think about that. It's 55 after the hour. <laughs> My buddy Fred just direct messaged me on Twitter listening to the show. He heard the Brian Kemp ad about vote early. And it really is. And maybe it's just from being from Louisiana, but but I always, when someone says vote early, my immediate response is vote often. It's much like when you go to, go to a Catholic church and the priest says, um, peace be with you and, and also with you. It's uh, vote early. Vote often. <laughs> Yep, being from Louisiana, I'm sure I'm still on the voter registry casting votes for Democrats somewhere uh, years after moving to Georgia. Nonetheless, uh, I am making gumbo this weekend. Why? Because the weather has turned cold. Uh, I made red beans and rice last night during the show. I simmered that pot for six hours. It was quite tasty, complete with a smoked ham hock. This weekend, it'll be gumbo and probably some Natchitoches meat pies, too, because I haven't had those in a while. Nonetheless... I intend to cook. So if you're not following me on Instagram, you should. I'll be posting the recipes at theresurgent.com as well. I, I want to circle back to this topic um, that I was mentioning, Republicans in Georgia. They really – the party does need to make inroads with uh, minority voters more than it has. And I really do believe that the way to do that is economically, uh, but also – Frankly, some Republicans in the state just need to learn how to talk better to people who don't look like them. Because I hear Republicans say stuff in the state sometimes. And I mean, I, I'm a, a white boy who lives in middle Georgia, and it makes me cringe some of the things they say. You just, you got to do better when you talk to people who don't look like you. Um, be honest, but come on, learn to do better. Um, the Republican Party in Georgia needs to do better. The demographics of the state are shifting, and uh, hopefully we will not get Amazon, which will just bring in a bunch of secular atheist hipsters, but we'll find out about that coming soon. 